um, Gemma here. Um, yeah, I know it's been a while and it's just been um, a series of interesting circumstances, um, work, family, bit of ministry, all sorts and the rest. Um, so I have been missing in action and um, I have wanted to come on to do, to share a few things in the past, but nothing came. Um, so it's not like I didn't want to, just for some reason nothing came. Um, it's either I did not remember to or there was nothing massively, uh, how do I describe it now? There was nothing from within pushing me to say something specific and I didn't want to just send a video up just for the sake of it. But tonight and in particular this evening, I was I was moved to do this because of a conversation I had with a friend tonight. So this friend of mine got in touch. I'm not going to reveal his name or his identity. Um, he got in touch um, asking if I'd watched a certain video of his. Well, not a video of his. It was a, a video link that he had shared with me. And I'm going to provide the link to the video um, in the, in the um, description section below. Um, because you do need to watch this video. I said to him, no, I hadn't watched it, but I was going to watch it. So I started watching it. And I mean, just the opening scene and trailer was enough for me to say back to him. I've not finished watching it, but I'm going to stop it for now and watch it with my family as a documentary later, because I think my whole family needs to hear this. Now, keep in mind, my family at the moment consists of two small children. Well, they're not exactly small. They're One's a teenager and one's just in the early years before his teens. So, uh, but they're fairly young. You, you know, in, in this world of today, this is not usually the kind of content that children of their age tend to see. But the problem is, um, that's precisely the problem. Um, young people are not exposed to either the truth or um, the things that are happening in the world in, in the context of current affairs and so on, whether from a biblical point of view or from just a purely social, socio-economic or geopolitical point of view. I remember when I was in primary school, um, that was something that my parents ensured that happened with me all the time. And I feel a bit um, disappointed with myself that I don't do the same or as much as my parents did for me that I don't do the same with my children. But anyway, I, 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 I got them to sit and watch through this. And in some parts, they found it quite entertaining. Um, it was a bit of a struggle initially to watch it and so on. But eventually they watched it. But that's not what this about. This is about. This is about the conversation I had with this my friend um, in an ensuing um, text message. So um, essentially, what he talked about was he his concerns for next year. He was very concerned, or he is very concerned, or he was. Hopefully, he was rather than he is very concerned for 2022 and the plans that certain folks have, in particular for humanity. I mean, we've been seeing this thing unfold since pretty much around December of 2019. So this is getting on for two years now that this has been going on, especially when you consider once upon a time we're told, was it 14 days, 15 days, 10 days? I don't remember precisely now, but it was a number of days to flatten the curve. And it's gone through all sorts of um, transformations. And, and I mean, they've, they've just been stretching the goalposts since such that the goalpost is no longer like 12 feet wide the goalpost feels like several towns long okay or maybe even several countries long who knows but the point i'm i'm making here is that we had a conversation and he expressed concerns and he was scared well he expressed fear to a degree not look i know this guy this guy is not a man of fear this guy he, he is this guy loves god and this guy is is um is he's taking initiative to do things that a person filled with fear would not do but his recognition of the things that people are about to do began to fill him with concern 
not just for himself, but especially for others. And I said some things to him. I said, um, I said, uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the things he said, um, because that really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to look at what he, the things that he was concerned about and what he was planning to do. He was planning a way of escape um, so that, you know, it was possible for perhaps, I don't know, maybe him and his family or family and friends or family, friends and congregation. I don't know. Excuse me. To escape the things that are coming. And I said this to him. And I... I'm reading this to you not because I just want you to be part of the conversation. I, I'm reading this to you because I want you to think about this. The reason why I want you to think about this is because many people are beginning to be filled with despair. Many people who have been watching and waiting, watching and praying, are beginning to be filled with despair. They are beginning to wonder, is he coming? And when I say, is he coming? I'm referring to Yeshua. I'm referring to Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ coming? I mean, when he, exactly is he coming? Is he coming back in my lifetime? Are things just going to get worse and worse? Am I going to see some money come of the tribulation period? And so I want to share this with you. So I said to him, brother, remember, God always provides a way of escape for his called out ones. The ultimate escape being what is written in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 18. If you don't know it, please go read it. This is talking about the Harpazo. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 52. Again, which talks about the Harpazo, or what many will call the rapture. I said, remember Noah. Remember Lot. Remember the children of Israel at the shores of the Red Sea. Remember the children of Israel when surrounded by the Assyrian soldiers in 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. If you remember in that particular episode, in fact, I'll just mention each of these things separately with regard to noah remember noah was vilified for years up to possibly somewhere between 100 and 120 years i don't remember precisely which but he was he was building that ark for a long time and i'm convinced that while he was building the ark people were ridiculing him people were insulting him people were calling him a conspiracy theorist people were saying he was out of touch people were probably telling him that he'd lost his mind and so on and then all of a sudden, the promised flood came. With regard to Lot, you remember that um, Lot was in a very horrible city called, well, two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. And God eventually poured out judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. But just before, just before he poured out judgment, he sent two angels to rescue Lot and his family. And unfortunately, Lot's wife looked back and so she was turned into a pillar of salt. But Lot, Lot and his two daughters escaped. Uh, and so we have, from there, we have, we have the tribes of the Ammonites and the Moabites um, to this day. But bottom line is, before the trouble came, God rescued his people. When I talked about the children of Israel at the shore of the Red Sea, you remember that, you know, the people cried to Moses, did you bring us out here to suffer? Did you bring us, have you filled them with so much hope? They were now complaining to Moses that, you brought us here to suffer. You brought us here to be killed and so on. Oh, if only uh, we, we, we had remained and so on. And then Moses turns to God and God says to him, you know, what is that in your hand? Why are you looking at me? What is that in your hand? And so Moses, you know, points at the Red Sea with his staff and then the Red Sea parts and then the people go across. And then as soon as the last Israelite has crossed the Red Sea or the last Israeli has crossed the Red Sea, the, the, the Red Sea comes back together again and consumes all the armies of Egypt, or at least the ones who pursued at the time. The point being, God always rescues his own. The example I was given in, I, I believe it's in First Kings chapter 19, in verse, sorry, Second Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Um, the, the, I think it was Sennacherib, the, 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 um, the Assyrian leader or, 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 or emperor or, or whatever his title was, who surrounded, whose army surrounded the um, Israelites, um, in particular Jerusalem. There was a siege around Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us there in 2 Kings chapter 13, 19 and verse 35, that in one night, one night, one night, I repeat that friends, one night, one angel came in and slew 185,000 soldiers. Let that sink in for one second. 
in one night, one angel came in and slew 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Okay? So I continue by saying, the Lord always looks out for his own. Remember Jesus' words in John chapter 14, verse 3, where it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that where I am, there you may be also. That where I am, there ye may be also. The retrieval of God's people from this dark, wicked planet is about to take place. I am 100% convinced of it. In fact, not only will I put a link to the video that he wanted me to see in the description, I also put a link to the video, uh, to the trailer of the movie. Well, the docu-movie, should I call it? Um, it's both a documentary and a movie at the same time which consists of quality acting, quality narrating, and quality interpretation of the scriptures. And it's the movie called The Common Wrath. Now, that, that title, if you've never seen the movie before, almost sounds scary. And actually, if you are not on God's side, if your name has not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you are not yet born again, if you have not called on the name of the Lord Jesus for your salvation, then you should be scared. But for the believer, the one whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, there should be no fear. And by the way, that's essentially what I'm trying to encourage everyone with now. Regardless of how you see things panning out, do not be afraid. Or as the Bible tells us in many different places in the Bible, and in particular in Psalm chapter 118, it says, fear not. Fear not. I think it's Psalm 118 verse 8 or thereabouts. Now it says, um, it says, the retrieval of God's people from this dark wicked planet is about to take place. God is allowing a bit more time to let more people into the kingdom by being saved, being born again. Though, and, and then I mentioned some things about the prayer meetings he's been organizing. I, I told him, those, your prayer meetings are part or is part of the right thing to do at this time. The one thing we must not do is fear. Only believe, brother. Only believe. I'm not saying these things to make him look bad. Like I said, I'm not revealing his his um, his um, identity. Odds are he'll probably not see this video because I don't I don't, I don't think he's particularly subscribed to this channel. I don't ask people to subscribe to the channel. Um, not because I wouldn't like more people to subscribe, but because I don't really feel that's my responsibility. I feel like I'm a I'm a uh, I'm just a parrot sitting on a on a wall screaming out loud what I believe God wants me to say. And if whoever God draws to hear it, will hear it. And if God does not particularly draw a person to hear it, then the person won't. I'm not bigger, you know, I, I know my station. I'm not some big man of God that everybody should subscribe to or anything like that. And, and then he said something that I also responded to. He said, we need to have a game plan and begin to think about how to escape. And I said, brother, you are already following God's game plan. And I said to him to look at Luke chapter 21, verses 34 to 36. And I'll read that for you or to you. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and, and cares of this life. And so that day may come upon you unawares. For as a snare or a trap shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch it therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And also I said in Mark chapter 13, verse, 22, verse 32 to 33, it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son of Man, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. The Bible does not say watch and find how to escape. The Bible does not say pray and know how to escape. The Bible says watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. The key to escape is to watch and to pray. Why? Because the person who organizes the escape is not you and I. 
God is the one who is going to organize our escape. And our escape is going to be collective. The individual escapes, God will still organize. But then the collective escape, God is going to organize. And here's the thing. If the pattern of the escape in Genesis chapter 6 with Noah, yes, with Noah, if the pattern of escape with Lot, the pattern of escape with the Israelites in escaping at the Red Sea, the pattern of escape with the Assyrian soldiers or the Israelites from the Assyrian soldiers in, in 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35 is anything to go by. It means that what is very likely is that we are going to be on the cusp of the Great Tribulation or the period of the Tribulation, the period of the final seven years, the, the, the time the Bible calls uh, the 70th week of Daniel, the time the Bible calls the time of Jacob's troubles, we are going to be on the cusp of it when we're going to be suddenly snatched out of here. We're going to be on the cusp of it and then suddenly we're snatched out of here. So in the meantime, in the meantime, don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus said in, um, I believe it's in John 16 verse 33, it says, let not your, your heart be troubled. No, no, that, that's actually John 14 verse 1. What am I saying? But in John 16, Jesus says, in the world you will have tribulation. In me you have peace. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Your escape is not premised on your skill. Your escape from the dark things that are coming upon this planet is not premised on your ability to find a way to escape. Your, your escape is not premised on your survival skills. Your escape is premised on the God who looks out for you. The Bible says that you are, you are the apple of his eye. Anyone who pokes at you is poking at him and he will not let that happen. So I continue by saying, Oh, lastly, you need to see this. Luke 17, 22 to verse 33. It says, and I think this is where I'll stop. It says, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see the here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of his generation. That's talking about the cross. And as it was in the days of Noe, which is um, speaking of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noe went, entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, listen to that, the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them. The same day that, so that Lot went out of Sodom, it, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon a housetop, he stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. By the way, this is referring to the tribulation period itself. Okay, This is, um, what, this is not referring to the rapture in itself. Um, and I know it almost sounds like I'm contradicting myself. I am not contradicting myself. At this time, the rapture has already taken place. But it says, in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. So this is talking about the period of the abomination that makes desolate, which is mentioned in Daniel 9, 27. And Jesus expands on it in Matthew chapter 24. It says, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return, not return back. Remember Lord's wife. But here's the important bit that I want you to keep in mind. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Friends, I know they are doing crazy things in the world. There is a massive drive to destroy lives, microeconomies, and so on in the world right now. In my view, there is a massive conspiracy going on right now. But the fact that 
the rapture has not yet taken place does not mean you should despair does not mean you should quit in your in your attitude of watching and praying if anything it should intensify why because the hapatsu of the church is on the horizon and the closer we get to the tribulation period and if you are watching you will know that we're getting increasingly closer to that period of the final seven years of daniel but the closer we get the closer it is for our escape home so friends be encouraged don't give in to fear that's what the devil wants you to do he wants you to look at what is going on like peter watched the winds and the and the, the storm and so on and began to sink and then he he cries out to jesus save me and then jesus takes him by the hand while still standing on the water he takes him by the hand and says to him why did you doubt friends do not doubt for one second that jesus is coming to take you home do not doubt it for one second if anything encourage one another as you see the day approaching don't quit don't give up don't be afraid do not fear fear not because jesus christ is coming for you imminently god bless you it's good to see you again god bless you oh quick shout out to a certain vf you will know yourself when i mention the word vf because um you are so kind in asking after me and of course the phone has gone and it's my son Bye. God bless you. Bye.